In this video, we're going to talk about performing multiplication within an FPGA. Multiplication is an operation that is frequently useful in many types of computation, but is also a somewhat complex operation to perform. And so first, we want to look at that complexity a little bit just to give you some motivation. So if we were to look at a 4-bit multiplication, one way to implement this in hardware would be with the implementation shown here. To contrast that with a simpler operation, if we were to look at a 4-bit addition, and a 4-bit addition we'd only need four single-bit adders versus the much larger number of adders plus some additional logic in the multiplier. And so this adds to both the latency and the area overhead of multiplication. And to give you an idea of that cost, we're going to look at the number of lookup tables required to perform a 24 by 17-bit addition versus a multiplication in a common series of FPGAs. So to perform an addition operation with this number of bits, we would need a total of 17 lookup tables. In multiplication, on contrast, we would need 403 lookup tables to perform in a multiplication of the same number of bits. And so you can see that multiplication in this case requires significantly more resources to perform. And so there is a desire to have more efficient ways to perform multiplication since multiplication is a common operation. And so because of this, FPGAs have for a while incorporated dedicated resources that are specifically tailored to performing multiplication. Initially, these dedicated resources were just for multiplication and they frequently performed an 18 by 18 bits multiplication. More recently, FPGAs have been incorporating multipliers or enhanced multipliers that can perform not only multiplication, but also some additional supporting operations. And so as an example of this, in the Xilinx 7 series FPGAs, they have a set of 25 by 18 bit, what are referred to as digital signal processing blocks or DSP blocks. And this figure here shows an abstract overview of what is available within a single DSP block. So there is the multiplication or the multiplier that has been around for a while in FPGAs. In this case, it performs a 25 by 18 bit multiplication. There is an also an adder subtractor that can happen before the multiplication. So it's referred to as a pre-adder because it happens before the multiplication. And there is also a block that can perform an additional addition subtraction, some logical operations, and some even comparisons of the numbers that are inputs. In addition to all of this, there are a number of flip-flops that can be optionally enabled to register the inputs at different points, and this can help to improve the frequency at which these multiplications or these different operations can be performed. And the last set of flip-flops can also be used to perform an accumulation. So the content of that last register can be, can be fed back into the adder and be used to perform a multiply and accumulate operation, which is also a common operation in many types of computation. So now that we have this resource, we need to be able to actually make use of it. And there are a number of different ways that you can make use of a DSP block or multiplier block within an FPGA. The ways we're going to present here are options that are available within the Vivado suite for Xilinx FPGAs. So one option is to allow the tools to infer that you want to, or that it should use a multiplier or one of these DSP blocks. So if you just wanted to perform a multiplication you, and you have code like this, the tools would very likely realize that this multiplication would fit in within a DSP block and would probably be more efficient than performing it with the regular logic, and so it would infer to use a DSP block. Uh, the advantage of this option is that it's very easy. It doesn't require any special knowledge on the program. It just leaves it up to the tools to figure it out. Uh, the disadvantage is that you may not get exactly what you expect because uh, you're leaving it up to the tools to perform the optimization for you. And this might change from tool to tool set in exactly how it optimizes this. A second option is to use a predefined macro so that you definitely make use of a DSP block. Uh, one example of this is there is a macro already in place that performs a multiplication of two inputs and produces an output from them. Here we're showing an example where we specified that we want one of the inputs to be 24 bits wide and the second input to be 17 bits wide. We're feeding those two inputs in as inputs A and B and then the output comes out 
uh, on the product or P line. There are also macros for other types of operations. You can actually expand this macro if you want to make use of the integrated register. So here we have the same multiplication macro where we've now specified that we're going to have a latency of one. Um, and so because of this, we need to have some additional inputs. We need to feed a clock input to feed the flip-flops and possibly or likely a reset so we can get these flip-flops back to some known state at the beginning. And with this set up, the output would be delayed one cycle from when for a given set of input values. But an advantage of this could be that it can allow the system to run at a higher frequency. And there are also macros for other types of operations such as a multiply accumulate operation for instance. Uh, an advantage of these macros is that you're definitely going to make use of the dedicated multiplication or DSP resource. And it also wraps up some of the complexity for you. You don't have to fully understand all of the inner workings of the DSP block. A third option is to make use of a DSP template. Basically, this template provides you full access to all of the features and all of the configuration options of the DSP resource within the FPGA. And as a abbreviated example, this shows how you could instantiate or use the DSP template. Uh, the advantage of this is it gives you full access to all of the features within the DSP block and it can allow you to implement options that might not have macros or that might the tools might not automatically recognize for you. So it gives you greater flexibility, but the disadvantage is that it leaves it entirely up to you to understand how you're going to set the different configuration options and how are you going to enable and configure all the different flip-flops and every other element of the DSP uh, that exists. And so you have to have a larger understanding or a fuller understanding of all of the features or options that are available. And a fourth option that is available is to make use of the IP catalog within Vivado. And this is basically a GUI interface that allows you to specify the operation you want to perform. And it helps guide you through the process of creating a customized IP for your particular operation. The benefit is that this is moderately easy to use, uh, but you have a little bit less understanding perhaps of what is actually being implemented, and it may or may not be as efficient as using some of the predefined macro or template options. Here we will look at where you can find information to instantiate the multipliers and DSPs via some of the various methods we discussed. Two of the methods, the information can be found in the language template section. You can find that either in the Tools and Language Templates option, or you can also find it over here in the left of the toolbar on Language Templates. When you click on that, under Verilog, there are a few areas of interest. One under the Device Macro Instantiation. Our board is an Arctic 7. Under the DSP48s, you can then see there are a number of different macros over here. So the one that we previously saw was one that just performs multiplication and so within this you can see the macro that you can then copy out and put in some area of your file. There are also macros for other pieces of functionality that you can implement with the DSP blocks. For example, you could implement an option that performs an addition or subtraction and there are some other options. And so that's where the macro options are. You can also find the template for the, the DSP under the device primitives instantiation and then under the arithmetic functions, there is a 48-bit multifunction arithmetic unit. And you can see under here, it's got the full template for the DSP, and you can see the many options that are available. So that covers two of the options. And then the third option is under the IP catalog. Under the basic elements, there is a DSP macro. And when you bring that up, it offers you options to configure the DSP block in various different ways and how it is pipelined and how it is implemented.